Hey everybody, it's Kval here from Zurb, and I'm going to talk a little bit to you about how the Foundation JavaScript works. To start off, uh, Foundation JavaScript depends on jQuery. So with Foundation 6, we uh, assume that you have jQuery in the page. So when you're adding the Foundation JavaScript, you're going to want to add jQuery first. Um, we tend to recommend you put jQuery and Foundation down at the bottom of your page uh, just before the end of your body tag. Uh, what that does is that lets all of the elements of the page get rendered by the browser before the J uh, JavaScript parses um, and make sure that they're all available for Foundation to instantiate and, and deal with. Um, the other nice thing about that is it lets your page render before the browser has to worry about how to do JavaScript because uh, JavaScript renders synchronously anytime a uh, browser encounters a JavaScript file, it's going to stop everything it's doing, go and figure out what it needs to do from the JavaScript before it keeps going. So putting your JavaScript down at the end of your body rather than up in the head lets the page mostly render, giving a, a mostly complete user experience before uh, pausing to do the JavaScript. Uh, one thing to note on the Foundation JavaScript is our um, source code for the JavaScript actually uses ES 2015. So if you are not using the prepackaged repos, but you are compiling from source, you will need to use Babel or something like it uh, to compile down to a cross-browser happy JavaScript. Um, Foundation's plugins ship independently. Uh, so we ship a minified, compacted file that if you're using everything, you can do it, or you can install uh, different plugins independently. Uh, you'll need to install the core first. You can do uh, utils. You can pick and choose which plugins you want to do. Um, and as once you've got everything in the page, you are then going to instantiate foundation on the page. I mentioned we're using jQuery. You're going to grab everything on that page in a jQuery selector. So grab the whole document, call dot foundation on it to initialize it. That tells uh, foundation to go through everything that you've sent in that whole page and look for foundation data attributes, which are what tell it um, how to, to make things behave. An important note from this, if you're putting new content in your page later that you want to have foundation functionality, you will need to call foundation on it. So if, for example, you have some Ajax, you drop it in place, um, drop in new HTML, you can grab that all up in a jQuery selector, call foundation on it. That's how you instantiate any particular section to have foundation behavior. Foundation's plugins use data attributes for communication. So foundation keeps this nice, clean separation of uh, concepts. It will use classes for styling. It will use uh, data attributes for talking to JavaScript. And it will use um, IDs for targeting. Uh, so if you have something that is for has dynamic behavior, for example, uh, in the docs we mentioned, here's a tooltip. Uh, the data attribute, data tooltip, is what's specifying that. And if you're going to add additional behavior or pass additional options, and we'll talk about those in a sec, you're going to use data attributes to do that. Um, a whole slew of foundation uh, components have interactive components. You can actually see over here on the side, any of these that has a uh, JS stamp is using JavaScript to create some sort of interactive behavior. Uh, all of those different plugins uh, that use JavaScript have a lot of settings that you can configure. And we'll actually go through real quick uh, how, where you can see what settings are configurable. But you can configure those either globally. So in this example here, uh, we're configuring the global defaults for the accordion plugin. Um, or you can configure them on a per plugin or per instance basis by passing in data attributes uh, using the uh, kebab case of data attributes. So if I'm setting the slide speed to be 500, if I want to do it for all accordions, I can do it like this before I instantiate. If I want to do it for just one particular one, I can pass in it in as a data attribute. You can also bulk pass in options using a single data options attribute. For example, if you're using data attributes for something else. Um, so here you could do data options, you know, slide speed 500 or multi expand true. Uh, once you're doing this bulk, you're in the JavaScript syntax, so you're going to be camel case uh, with semicolon separating. You can, of course, also instantiate any sort of foundation JavaScript plugin using JavaScript, and in that case, you're just going to pass in those objects as a JavaScript object. 
looking over real quick to see how you would find out what are the options available. Um, every component, I'm looking actually at the reveal component right now. If you scroll down, there's a JavaScript reference section that's going to talk about what utility libraries are needed for that component. It's going to show you a little bit of the element structure, and it's going to highlight all of the different options available to you to configure. So you can see that for reveal, which is our modal plugin, there's a whole lot there. You can configure animation in and out, delays, close on click, all sorts of different things. So if we take a look at what that looks like over in a code pen, I just pulled out the code pen example from the docs, which has a single uh, open link and a reveal modal in there. And it looks like this. You click it, there's a simple modal. Uh, you can configure that in a number of ways. So you could configure it globally. I could go in here and use that foundation.reveal.defaults. Uh, let's do overlay and say do it with no overlay. If I do that, when I click this, now there's no overlay behind the modal. I could also do that as the example uh, was uh, in a data attribute here. So coming back, we have our overlay again. If I come back over here to the modal and add a data attribute, data overlay equals false. Do that. I've now configured just this modal to not have an overlay. So that is how you can configure the foundation JavaScript. Um, other quick items to, uh, to know about, this is what I mentioned before. So if you're adding HTML to the page, after you've already instantiated foundation, you can instantiate it with foundation just by passing it into the dot foundation JavaScript um, method. Uh, you can reinitialize things using dot reinit. You can either do it by a whole plugin class or passing in the jQuery wrapped objects. Um, all of these JavaScript plugins are accessible with JavaScript, though for most situations, you actually don't need to use JavaScript because you're going to be just if you're using the basic case, you can just uh, instantiate with data options. Um, also, any particular method uh, or plugin has a set of methods available. So, for example, reveal, if you look down, methods available, it had open, it had close, it has toggle, all of these things. You can access those through a helper method if you only have access to the DOM. So, when you instantiate, a plugin, it creates a whole JavaScript object that gets hooked up with those DOM objects. You don't have to know where that JavaScript object lives. Just grab the DOM object associated with it, call the dot foundation helper method on it, and then pass in the name of the method that you want. So in this case, open, if I go over here and I want to open this thing programmatically, I can do that by grabbing my reveal, example modal one calling dot foundation on it and passing open. And there, as soon as it runs, it opens automatically. Uh, that about wraps up the basic overview of foundation JavaScript. Oh, the one final thing is events. So every plugin will fire different events when uh, it does different behavior. And you can listen to those events to hook into them and, and trigger your own JavaScript. You can find what events are triggered and when by looking in the events section of the JavaScript um, reference for any particular component. And that wraps up our quick overview of the foundation JavaScript.